Ladies and gentlemen, we're very fortunate today. My interview is with Mackenzie Yamazaki. Okay, she's from California. As a matter of fact, she was Rookie of the Year last year in California, which is not yes. easy to do, right? So good job. So start off with a, start off telling us a little about yourself, how long you've been in the business, you know, what kind of business you're doing, all that good stuff. Awesome. Um, so I actually just celebrated two years in March, so I was super excited about that. Um, I am a mom of two, and I um, – I kind of, so this started a couple years ago when I was pregnant and we bought a house that needed work. Um, so we had a lot of fun and we were doing that. And then we decided to list it. And when we listed it, we um, we didn't really look for a realtor. We, we had a friend that was one. Um, and so I was really involved in the process and I would ask him a lot of questions and ask him if I could like help with things. And um, so I decided to get my license, and I wanted to be able to help other families that were kind of young and starting out like mine. Nice. So you really got in because – so now, let me, now be honest. When you were working with your friend or whoever it was, uh, mm-hmm. did you say to yourself, God, uh, I could do this? <laughs> yes, 100%. Um, as, as we were kind of going through the paperwork and I saw – um, I mean, I, I was fine with it, but I saw like how much he was making and how, how what he was doing and how the process went. I was kind of like, man, like I know I I could do this. So um, right, yeah. So I got my license right after that. Good for you. Good for you. And you had a really good first year too. Tell us a little about that. I did. Um, yeah, it was it was all from my sphere of influence. Um, so I I kind of just worked worked the way that every I mean I didn't try to you know do anything new I just did what the man my manager had said and kind of I would jump on these calls and kind of listen to what other people were doing um and yeah I I just would call all my all my friends and family and let them know that I had just started and that I was really excited and if they you know if they had any questions or if they needed anything um that I was that I was definitely there to help and you got so you got most of your business from your sphere. All okay, your my first year, year, all of it was from my sphere. Oh, okay. So you must know a decent amount of people. I know a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now, okay. So, and tell everybody what 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 city you're in in California. Um, I currently live in Corona, California, and I work out of the Anaheim Hills office. Um, right. So. All of my business, I would love to say that it's all kind of near where I live, but it's not. I kind of go anywhere from, like, Santa Ana, Tustin area, all the way up to, like, Apple Valley, and then back down to um, even as far as, like, Lake Elsinore. Oh, and Temecula. Apple Valley, wow. I know, and I have five deals in Apple Valley right now. (laughs) Holy schnikes. I mean, okay, here's how I know Apple Valley, Uh, like, twice in my life when I've decided, you know, like when we first, when Mark first bought one of the California territories, I'm like, oh, that's only three and a half hours. I'm going to drive it. Yeah. But mm-hmm. don't try that on a Sunday night because three and a half no. hours is more like getting down the hill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, re- I remember I, uh, being in bumper to bumper traffic in Apple Valley and I'm like, Apple oh, yeah. Valley, what an interesting name for a town. <laughs> I know. I won't do Apple. I won't do open houses uh, late Sundays because I won't get home. You won't, yeah, until Monday morning, unfortunately. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a nice little drive, but it's interesting when you go that way through Barstow and all that. But Apple Valley is like when you start coming back into civilization Mm -hmm. when you're coming from. uh... All right, so you have five. Is that what you have pending right now, five deals, or what do you have actually? Um, Well, they kind of. um, So I closed one earlier this month. Uh, One of them just went on hold, uh, you know, just to hold over until everyone's able to. Um, safely move about houses, and then um, the other ones, they're buying. Okay. Okay, good. Well, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Now, um, now, now do, you, do you mind giving us a little numbers your first year in order to be rookie of the year? So what did you what did you actually end up doing in your first complete year? I wish I knew those numbers. I don't. Um, I, I had one listing, and I believe I had – three buyers and two renters, I believe. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So what's your, what is your average sale price where you are? 
Um, I would say it's probably in the 400s. I got gotcha. you. Okay, cool. For where I'm at. Yeah, I've Apple. done, yeah, Apple Valley, those ones. Um, I have one up there that's in the three, or actually two that are, that are in mid threes, and then one that was in the mid twos. Um, and then when I come down this way, they're usually between like four, four to 700. Okay. And what is your goal for the calendar year of this year, 2020? Um, my goals, I have three goals this year. Um, okay. So my first is, um, and this is always a goal, is to further my education. Um, so I, I'm taking, I'm actually taking a class right now, a certification class um, on NAR. And then um, I want to take one more by the end of the year. Uh, and my second goal is to double my sales from last year. So last year I quadrupled my sales from the previous year. So I want to at, at the least double that. Um, okay. And then my last goal is just to maintain a, a, a healthy family work balance. Okay. All right, good. So now since you mentioned you have uh, two children, how old are they? My son is just turned 11 in January, and my daughter is four and a half. She turns five in July. Okay. So being a mom, being a, real, a successful real estate agent, uh, tell us a little about your schedule, how you work this out. Um, I tr so I wake up every day at five, and I usually read, um, read for an hour, and, and then – I start looking at my emails and I kind of try to do as much as I can from five to seven before they wake up. And then I do um, drop offs at school from like seven. I, my daughter goes to school in Hacienda. She goes to a little Japanese preschool. Um, mm -hmm. So that's pretty far away. So by the time I get back, it's usually around like nine ish. Um, and then I'll work from nine to one. And then I start doing pickups and, um, I kind of work intermittently um, while they're either sleeping or at school. Got you. Okay, cool. All right, good. Uh, anything else you want to uh, add about the family work balance? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I've kind of gotten it down now. At first, I would get a little frustrated because I just didn't know how to fit it all in. Um, but I would say waking up before they get up and staying up after they go to bed has definitely helped um, be able to really focus and be present when they're here and then also still maintain and be able to get work done um, throughout the day. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, you squeeze it in when you can. And it's one yeah. of those businesses where you can get away with that and still do well. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm always available. I mean, when my clients call or text me throughout the day, like I, I'm always available to answer those. Um, and you know, if I have to like step away for a little bit, but I feel like I, I feel like I do get a lot done in the very early morning and the very late night. Well, not late. They go to bed around like seven, <laughs> but I, in the early morning and after they go to bed is when I get a lot of it done. Good. Okay, cool. All right, good. So, all right. So now, you know, the, the big question of today is all this craziness going on, okay, how are you working right now? What are you doing? Uh, right now I am just mainly doing check-ins and follow-ups. Um, I am, uh, I you know, I've texted a lot of people, called a lot of people, emailed a lot of people that I was working with or am working with. Um, a lot of my clients right now want to wait it out a little bit, um, at least until the the quarantine comes up. Um, they don't want people walking through their homes, which is understandable. Um, so I'm yeah. just being here for them and completely understanding about it. And then as far as my buyers, my buyers are still looking. My buyers are still ready. Um, they do want to wait a little bit just because they don't want to be out and about, but they're still out there and they're still ready and uh, waiting to buy. So I'm kind of just here for questions and answers and, um, you know, if anybody needs anything. I've had a couple calls of, about, you know, whether or not they should refinance or if, you know, if it still is okay to sell their house. And so I'm kind of just here answering phone calls and text messages and emails. So you're, you're available being a service and, you know, and yes. I like what Mark said on our, on our Facebook live, by the way, let me put the plug in because most people weren't on. A lot of people came on Mackenzie while you were trying to get back. Oh, nice. Too. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. So, and I like what, I like what Mark said, which is, especially in California where the inventory is so tight, I mean, you still have people that want to look and right now they do mm -hmm. have a lot 
less competition because a lot of people are on hold. Yeah. So it's almost like a, a little unfair advantage if uh, you have people that are super interested in doing something. But like you said, if you have people that want to wait and see, the worst thing you can try to do is push them to not wait and see. But then there exactly. are some people that just want to keep going and buy today too, which is fine too. So you got to be, I call it right now, really exercising your versatility. You got to really I be agree. like that right now. Yeah, so, I'm I'm not yeah. pushing or trying to push at all. Um, but I mean I I'm still getting tons of questions. I think people are just trying to like find answers. Um and so I'm just here kind of answering and I know that it'll all kind of settle once everybody's able to go out um again. But yeah. For now I'm just here answering. <laughs> yeah, that's all you can do. You know, it's what's gonna happen you know, and, and look at I've been doing this for 35 years. I've been coaching for 25 of them. And I'm going to tell you that even the, even the super top producers, mm -hmm. most of their business is done in two or three major runs a year, meaning that they go on rolls, boom, 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 yeah. boom, right? And if you look at your, most people are like that. So now you got kind of an artificial lull. I mean, it's nobody's fault. It happened. And right. the one thing you can do, for me, this was winter every year in my market. It always slowed down to a crawl, especially mm -hmm. January, February, and March for me. So that was the time I just super packed my pipeline. Pack it up. Yes. Right. So then, then when it loosens up, you know, you start, um, you know, filling in those things. So we can all do that. Some people, uh, you know, won't even be able to talk right now. That's fine. Follow up with them later. Some people will, and some people want to. <laughs> I've had a couple of agents call me, and my seller was mad. I mean, they still want me showing the property. They still need to sell. You can have people like that too. You can have everything in between. Yeah, I think I think right now just staying on top of their mind and just being kind of considerate for how they feel is is going to be um, is going to help yeah. build my pipeline for you know when they are ready. Absolutely, absolutely. And how about your database? Is your database uh, pretty organized? Um, I'm actually I'm taking this downtime to get it very organized to get it more organized than it was. I do have a, a CRM and. I um I am trying to to get everybody's um information like I'm putting all like their the birthdays and the an the home anniversaries and all of that so I'm kind of just fine tuning what I already have. Okay, good. Good. And don't forget, it's a great time to make sure everybody's in the VAC and they're getting newsletters cuz yes. even corporate corporate newsletters are going to be sensitive to what's going on too, so they'd be very helpful to all of you yeah. guys to do that for sure. All right? Cool. All right. So, anything else you want to mention about things that are currently going on right now um no no I think I think just being just being there for you know what what people are looking for I guess you know maybe even just checking in on them and making sure they're good just staying on top of mind is is probably yeah also um I think that um if you have elderly people and they need yeah. help with groceries I know a lot of agents are doing that I think that's such a great idea it is, yeah. It really is. It's safer for them to stay home, and we're able to kind of go out and help them. I do see some of the grocery stores have opened like an hour early, which is really, really nice. But yeah. I mean, even that, you know, some 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 people don't want to even kind of take advantage of that. So it is really nice that I've seen agents doing that, and that's that's an awesome idea and super helpful. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Great. All right, so, and, and you know, I, I think that all of us, uh, if we go through our sphere right now and really dig deep, talk to them, see what's going on, you know, make sure they're on a newsletter, make sure, I, mean, I would make sure they're on Market, market Watch myself. And then, like you said, Mackenzie, this downtime is the perfect time to make sure, because I know that uh, <laughs> people's CRMs are not super organized, and I would definitely take this time to do that. All right. Yeah. So, um the uh, I have to ask you this question I ask everybody I interview. Um, you know, if you were to start over again or knowing what you knew now or an agent trying to take it to the next level, what would be the three most things that you would tell them to focus on? Um, that's a good question. Um, I would have door knocked from the beginning. I was nervous to door knock, and I worked my sphere of influence really hard, but um, I started door knocking and I've gotten really great leads out of it. And I mean, obviously, you know, I've had a couple not so great conversations, um, but I just don't go back to those doors. But the, the doors that I have knocked on that I've had really good um, interaction with, like 
I'm, I'm keeping up with them, and I've gotten – I'm coming out of just my sphere of influence, which is awesome. Um, mm-hmm. And I would have started a farm earlier. I – I didn't really understand or I didn't know how to just pick an area. And now that I have, and my title rep was so helpful. Um, I would have, I would have definitely started that earlier because I'm getting really good feedback out of that now. And nice. um, my last, actually, this one's, this one's a, a good one. Um, I I would say build a strong team to work with, like um, having, you know, like a great manager, a great title rep, a, transaction coordinator, loan officers, just building a team that you can rely on and that, that you help them and they help you and just you work really well together. I think that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Like our affiliates we have with, with, uh, with, uh, with Berkshire Hathaway, uh, the mortgage companies mm-hmm. and so forth. I think that's, that's a great idea because, Huge. you know, they, um, they, yeah, they're on the same team as you and they have the same goal, you know, to help you and which is great. Like their goal is to help you and they, because they want to, obviously keep their relationships great and do more business mm-hmm. with the company. So that's a great, but I have to, so let's detail these. The first one you said was started door knocking earlier. And then you said kind of with your farm. So tell us, tell us what kind of door knocking you're doing and so forth. Um, so anytime that I have an, uh, a listing going up, an open house coming up, or even, I even did this with, um, I was representing the buyer and I just wanted to let everyone know that we got into escrow and on that exact property, there was tons of um, the, the the property ended up selling over listing price, and there was a bidding war between like five or six people. Um, and fortunately, my clients were able to get it. Um, but I went throughout the entire neighborhood and just let everyone know that there was buyers still looking, and that if they were interested, or if they knew anybody that was interested in selling, um, that we had buyers that were trying to still get into the neighborhood. And I got really good feedback out of that. Um, Good. And then okay, I. So, so what what I'm hearing there is just so like to just to reference the the book of everything you're talking about just listed, just sold, and hot buyer. So you can mm-hmm. do all of those different things. Now, obviously, disclaimer: I wouldn't door knock today, but as soon as no, enough, right? Door- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> today I would call. Today yeah, today today's not door knocking time. But um yeah. but once once we're able to again, I'm I'm going to continue doing that. But I was doing it before before all of this and I actually have leads that I mean they even gave me their phone numbers and that they wanted I have people that want to sell just from that. Um right. so it was I got really good feedback and I was nervous a little bit at first to door knock. Um, but then once I kind of went through I think it took me like three doors and I was like, Oh, like this is okay, like I got this. And then I felt really good doing it, and I've done it multiple times now. Um, but, yeah, I, I would not do it right now. <laughs> I would wait a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people get a little squirrely today doing it. Yeah. Um, you know. Okay, so, all right, so that's part of it. Get out there door knocking, and we mentioned three different scripts. Then you mentioned a farm. Okay, so yes. how big is your farm, and what? how many times do you get through it, all that stuff. Um, so I just started it, um, and it's it's pretty large, but I did get all of this information from my title rep, and he's been in the business for so long, um, and he's super helpful and knowledgeable um, about farms, and this is something that he really enjoys. So he was helping me, and he uh, he mentioned that I should, because I my first question was, I just didn't know where to start the farm. I didn't want to do it in the neighborhood that I live in, um, because I already talked to all my neighbors in this neighborhood, and they kind of already... I don't know. I just didn't want to want to do that. Um, but he mentioned a really great idea was doing a farm around um, the neighborhood that is zoned for my child's school because they're going to see me doing pickups and drop offs and PTA and being really involved there. So they'll always see that. And then on top of that, seeing my flyers. And so it'll just be, um, you know, I'll, I'll be in that area all the time. So that yeah. is where my farm is. It's um, it, it's big. But uh, I, I think it's okay. It's it's about 900 homes um, in that area. Nice. So that's a, yeah, that is a good size farm. Yeah, it's a good size. <laughs> it's a good size. Okay. All right. Cool. And then you mentioned now. So I hear geographic and demographic, meaning PTA and other organizations. Now mm-hmm. in those type of organizations. So just being in that area, they know what you're doing. They probably bring up yes. how's the market and things like that to you, don't they? Yes. 
Yeah, and so it's not just knocking on their doors. I mean, and it's kind of nice because um, they'll see me outside of it as well, but still in that area. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I really like that, that we chose okay. that area for the farm. Yeah, and it sounds like you just make people aware of what you're doing by your actions mm -hmm. and, and the things that you're involved in. Yes. All right, good. You're not a secret agent. That's good. That's important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, good. And what was the third one? Well, the third, you had um, a third one. I would say just like getting a team that you that you work well All with teams, um, right. as far as yeah. yeah I, so I really like my manager, and she's super super helpful. It's Jenny Abney, and um, my title rep, and my transaction coordinator my loan officers just I just know like if I needed anything I know exactly who to call I know you know the their response time and I just I work well with them so I think that's a huge part of it yeah yeah you know it's really interesting that uh, Mark and Gordon and so forth we've set up these agreements with people because I remember being back in the even in the mid 90s I had these agreements I just didn't call them this and mm -hmm. I always had people on my team. So you're talking about building the foundational team. We're talking about yes. mortgage originator, yes. title, working closely with your manager, who is definitely on your team. And by the way, Jenny's 100%. awesome. Yeah. yeah, she is awesome. And we have a lot. I mean, Larry, right down the street, is awesome. we have a lot. Mm -hmm. of Amanda's on this call. She, we have a lot of tremendous managers uh, as a company. We really do. So the great, great oh, yeah. shout out there. I really appreciate that. All right, so we have like a, a minute and a half left. Any final thoughts you want to give these people? By the way, thank you very much for being so flexible because it has been crazy the last two weeks. Oh, Even no, the it's totally this call fine. started off a little crazy. This Any is the best time. Else? I mean, I'm at, I'm at home, so this, <laughs> this works out well. Um, my last thought, uh, I, would say, I would say just being confident and calling and not being nervous to like let people know you're in it. Oh, and I started videos. Um, I did start a YouTube and it's funny because even when I see like friends or family out, they'll be like, Oh, I, like I, I saw your videos, like you're doing so well. And even if it has no, not nothing to do, but it didn't, it didn't have like an exact house that I was listing, even just those, like they see that I'm, that I'm active and that I, and I've gotten, um, I actually just got a call this week and he's like, yeah, you seem like you really know what you're talking about. And like, and it's just the videos. It's like explaining to people things that maybe they didn't, didn't know. And that we just kind of take, take for granted that we know all of this because we go to the trainings and, you know, this is our business and this is what we do every day. So maybe things that we think are just, you know, common knowledge, like not everybody knows. So I think that's, right. that's another part. Yeah, you know, it, it's so. I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, you know, and you said all the key phrases in there. Just by doing vid videos and being, um, you know, being visible to people in your social mm -hmm. media group, and they automatically think you're doing better. You, and, and, and it's amazing. Oh yeah, it, it and is. All you're doing is giving them information. Like we yes. take for granted that we know what we're doing, but not everybody knows what we do every day or what's going on. So it's mm -hmm. real important. And videos. It's really weird how well they work, isn't it? Yeah, I I think because they can see you, so you almost come off like more trustable, like your face is behind it, and you're not just writing the article and then they never see you. See you. Um, so I I've gotten really good feedback. I don't have a ton of subscribers, um, but my viewings are going up, especially you know when Prop 13 came out. Like I had a video that I had put out months before that, and like my viewings on that went in the hundreds because you know it was relevant at that time. So um, so I'm starting to kind of get build more traction with it, um, and yeah, I I think that people are it's easier for people to see you than to just read something that you wrote or just read you know something after looking at just a picture. I agree, and it's almost like you're having a conversation. What what it is? Yes. Is you're hitting them more on an emotional level because they feel like they're getting to know you because we we always this is why I've always preached um, voice to voice, whether it be over the phone or face-to-face -face door knocking is so much more powerful than anything else you can do in real estate because when they get to know you and you're consistent and you're professional, then they get to trust you. And then once they feel like they know you and trust you, they'll use you, they'll refer you. And videos yes. is the closest thing to face-to-face. -to -face. It sounds crazy, but it's true. Yeah. Um, oh, another thing that I did, uh, I, well, I have a Zillow um, you know, profile. And after all of my transactions, I, at first I was nervous to ask 
for it, but I, now it's just like I have a set day that I do it, um, and I ask for uh, them to review my services, and um, and I've gotten, I would say, majority of people respond really well to it as far as like, oh, yeah, I'd love to, and, you know, they go on and do it, and then I post their review on my social medias, and so people see that they not just that I closed a house or listed a house, but that my clients are happy with it as well. And I think that I've gotten really good feedback out of that. That's a great idea, and it's free, too, which I love. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I All feel right, like people cool. are more more um, up to go. Like, even when you go on online and you look up, like, a restaurant or something, you always want to look at the reviews. So I think, you know, having those reviews, people would look at your profile and be like, oh, okay, I see that, you know, actual people – are, are happy with her services. Yeah, and they have the person actually has to do it. It's not a testimony yes. you hand them, like in your no. package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah I think they have to go online and make like a little profile and log in their email and everything. Yep. All right, cool. Well, I really appreciate your time today. We're no, thank you. Minutes over, which is great. I really appreciate everything, Mackenzie. Thank you very much, guys. If you have thank referrals you. for the. Um, your Belinda area, okay? Yes. Mackenzie Yamazaki is your girl. Give her a call. Awesome. And you have, <laughs> thank you very much for your time. Have a great, you know, uh, week here. And uh, everybody be safe and do what you can during this time. Thanks, Mackenzie. Awesome. I really thank appreciate you. It. All thank right. You. Bye. Bye-bye.